music. Music is this language of emotion that touches each and every one of us. And music is my language. It is your language. It is the language that accompanies us throughout life. My name is Dr. Louise Bio. I'm professor of music at New River Community College. And more important than any credentials is the fact that I am bringing my love and passion for music and its relationship to history, society, and the world to my students. I have to be honest with you when it comes to my inspiration to pursue music. I was not a child prodigy. I had a brother, an older brother, who took piano lessons and I wanted to do anything my brother did. Well, he didn't want piano lessons and I'm the one who was the happy recipient. So I took piano lessons and I have to say also my mother used to sit at the piano and play a song called Stormy Weather and it just sounded so exotic to me. So I was, I was already taken in. Uh, fast forward several years when I was in junior high, I heard a choir singing at uh, a, an assembly and there was a pianist accompanying the choir and I thought, I can do that. And so after that, we had moved to Alaska. My family had moved to Alaska. And I thought, this is the best way for me to get involved. So I said, I will play the piano for the choir. And so that's the way it was. But I still didn't know that it was my passion. It was just my way of connecting. There was a turning point. I happened to, we lived about 130 miles south of Anchorage, Alaska. If you take a look at a map, there's quite a bit of a distance. But I went to a concert of Van Cliburn, who was the Tchaikovsky Grand Prize winner in 1958. And I heard him and I was so inspired. And so I just went to the music store and bought whatever he had played. And I had this I can do attitude, which can sometimes get you into a little bit of trouble. So when Susan Starr, a prize winner at the Tchaikovsky four years later, she came to Anchorage, Alaska, and she gave a master class. And I told myself, I can do this. So I prepared myself, or so I thought, and I went to that master class, and I sat down in this amphitheater, and I played what I thought was fantastic, and I proceeded to learn that practically everything was wrong. And it was the most, it was humiliating. I thought I was going to cry. I didn't know what to do. But afterwards, I went with my parents to see Susan Starr and said, what should I do? What can I do? And she said, here at the University of Alaska in Anchorage, we have a master teacher and a great artist. In fact, I knew him in Moscow because I was competing against one of his students. She said, I will tell him about you. I will ask him to take you on as a student. I was in high school at the time. So I thanked her profusely and the following fall during my senior year, we would commute to Anchorage uh, every two or three weeks for piano lessons. Graduated from high school, then I entered the University of Alaska Anchorage and because I recognized that in the big schools, you do not always have access to the great teachers. University of Alaska, it's it's a big school all around, but the music program was not a huge program, but the teacher was, I already had experience, was excellent. And that was the turning point. That was the turning point because I saw, um, I witnessed not just for myself in private lessons, but I saw this master teacher taking students who were extremely gifted and those who were not but making musicians out of every single one, finding what was, what was the points that he knew he could pull out of that student. And that's when I realized the difference one can have through one's teaching um, in changing someone's life. And then of course, all the concerts that I attended and the concerts that he performed in, well, it was just, I knew this was it. One hiccup. One hiccup. And that hiccup was 
After my first year at the University of Alaska, I entered a piano competition and I won it. And I was just so excited. I couldn't believe it. And the funny thing that happened, the hiccup was that summer I went home and I was like, how am I going to make a living at this? I don't think, how can I make a living at music? And I decided, well, I'm going to try something else. Don't ask me why. You have a big high and then you have a low. And then I enrolled in the following semester in a computer science class. And I thought, there's the money. <laughs> there's where I'll have a career. Um, I was out in one week. I could not do it. I was like, no, this is not for me. No, I have to go to my language of music, which is all of our language of music, and really take it on and do what I can. To be very succinct here, that great master teacher, well, he became my husband. And we've been sharing music and uh, this language of music uh, ever since. So it's been a wonderful collaboration, and I always have someone to urge me and egg me on and tell me if something's not good and uh, just just perform together. That's what we've also done. We've done two piano and, and all kinds of things. So anyhow, but the turning point was going to the university and having my eyes opened to possibilities and then realizing that, you know, music, music was what I had to do. After earning my bachelor's degree in music, in performance, uh, we moved to France. And that was a really a pivotal moment in my life. Um, it allowed me to experience another culture, another people, <laughs> learn a new language. And uh, this, we were living in the southern part of France, in Provence, which was just lavender fields everywhere, sunflower fields, and of course, a lot of vineyards. We were fortunate to be living in a house that was right at the foot of a castle. We lived at a, in a castle village of Grignon, and it was just fairy tale. And in terms of music, it was so um, important for me because it gave me the chance to play with orchestra, and which I had never had that opportunity before. And that was just, just a thrill of a lifetime. And my husband and I were playing in music festivals and again where we had two piano concerts and it was just um, an eye-opening experience. And we were there for seven years. Our son was born in France. Those experiences in Europe opened my eyes again to the world, but that's the world that I bring to my students. I am focused on getting everyone outside of our box that we are all in, we all live in a box, and um, having one experience things and see the world from another perspective. And music is such a fantastic language to do that with. Because as I believe I said at the beginning, music touches all of us, it touches all of us differently, but this is how we connect. I can never understand having a history class without hearing the music of the people we're listening to. We're all listening to music, uh, however you do it. I've very, I think I've had only one student in all these years of teaching who never listened to music, but at the end of the class, he did find something that he enjoyed. So I'm bringing the world to my students, and to me, this is, I feel I've been so fortunate to experience those things, and I'm here in southwestern Virginia, and you know, some people have done some fantastic things and have traveled and others have not, but you can travel through my classes. And so I take people to uh, venues around the world and we hear great artists and uh, listen to the great composers and just understand more about who we are as human beings because I try to connect the past the history with the present. I mean, people are so surprised to hear all these love songs from the medieval period because, I mean, love is like this common denominator among humankind. And when I can pull the past with the present and have people compare and then say, that wasn't so different. 
it's not really that, I mean, it was a long time ago, but I can relate to it. So I'm all about connections, connecting people, connecting people with what's going on today. So for example, I'm big into active learning. You don't just take my class and take a couple exams and you're out. Oh no, no, that's not, that's no. Active learning is all about getting people involved, hands-on. Now, I do not expect anyone to play any instrument. That's the fantastic thing. We may be musicians, and I've had a lot of musicians in my classes, but we may know nothing about music. We maybe just know how to turn on something so we can listen to it. It doesn't matter. You don't have to have any experience. But what I'm doing with this act of learning is I am constantly invigorating the classes with assignments that I discover. Like during the semester, I will see something on YouTube or somewhere and, or read about something happening, and I'll send out an assignment and I'll say, hey, check this out, because it goes beyond our, our original core material. But it keeps us updated and it gives me a chance to respond to my students because they will say, oh my gosh, I didn't realize that. And then we had this little conversation back and forth via messages or emails and or if we're in class. And it just allows me a chance to connect again with my students. I was reviewing what some students had written. And actually, you can sort of see some of that on my website. Someone sent me an email and he wrote, he had been so down and I had given my CDs to, to, my, to my students and he said it was late at night, I was going out to check on something on the farm and the moon, the way the sky was, he said, I don't know if you saw it last night but I just decided to turn on your music full blast and he said, oh my gosh, I, I got pulled out of this, this dump that I was in, you know, and and so I guess while I want everyone to get A's in my class, what I really am most concerned about, what makes me tick, is that I can make a difference in the life of a student, whether it's through just a story about a composer or whether it's, you know, whatever we're listening to, uh, talking about children and education and using music or talking about end of life using music to help people. Let me just say that I'm hoping that this class doesn't stop at the end of the semester. My hope and my sincere desire is that, that students will take something with them when they leave. So I mentioned earlier that I had won this one competition and that was sort of a motivating factor and at the same time it was sort of a moment of, well really what do I want though, what can I do? So I have to be honest, and I entered many competitions. I got booted out of quite a few right in the first round and did make it to the semifinals in a couple major competitions, international competitions, and was the first prize winner of the Bartok Kabalevsky Piano Competition. Now, I have to say that when I won that prize, we were still living in France, and that competition was held right next door at Radford University. And when we came and I won the competition, which was huge, um, I told myself, we, we drove around a little bit and I just never imagined that one day I would be living here. And here I am. And the reason why I mentioned those failures at competitions is that because all of us through life go through experiences and it doesn't always work the way we plan but the idea is you don't give up you just keep trying and um, I can say that with my courses at New River most people get through the semester just fine and so when I am teaching whether I'm teaching music in society which really covers art music throughout uh, throughout the centuries and great composers and performers as I mentioned um, but we also have history of music and history of jazz and coming up in January we'll have world music which I'm terribly excited to go into. But uh, these are the courses and some of them are Z 
courses, you know, lead Z as in Zorro, Z courses. And that means if you choose a Z course, um, there is nothing to buy at the bookstore. It's all provided within the course. So if you are on a budget, Z courses are great. And I uh, just wanted to make sure you knew about that. And that's primarily with the music and society uh, courses that are Z, whether it's online or in lecture. Um, I really love teaching these courses. <laughs>